This is the story of a birth of a record label, featuring a band called, appropriately enough, The Good Life. Falling down the staircase. So if you clicked on this video, then you probably already know this episode is about Saddle Creek Records and the bands on Saddle Creek Records. But what you probably didn't know is that one of the members on Saddle Creek Records was once in a band called Smash Mouth. I'm Shannon, this is the Phantom Wire, and this is a brief history of Saddle Creek Records. There was so much music going on at that time. I mean, in Lincoln, in Omaha, and outside the Saddle Creek scene. All these bands that played around, that we go to local shows. Simon Joyner, Mercy Rule, Mousetrap, Alex McManus, and I loved them all, and I just and I really respected the music so much. We were like young high school kids, and we had found this music, and it was kind of like ours, and we really loved it. That sort of put things in a perspective for us of, of seeing kids our age, you know, actually completing songs and putting together a set of music. So I'll just preface this episode by saying I don't know anyone who was ever in a band on Saddle Creek Records. Uh, therefore, all the information that I've compiled here has been my own research and it may be subject to error because of that. So don't come for me in the comments. <laughs> you can leave a comment and let me know uh, where I was loud and wrong. But um, yeah, if, if I was incorrect about something, I'm not setting anything in stone here. It's just uh, what I did find on the internet. And by watching the full documentary, Spend an Evening with Saddle Creek. So if you like to kind of deep dive on the history of Saddle Creek Records, I definitely recommend that uh, documentary. It has interviews from Tim Kasher, Mike Mogus, um, The Faint. It has uh, interviews from the, the folks running uh, the label, which is uh, Rob Nansel and uh, Connor Ober's brother, Justin, people like that. So it's very interesting to watch, but uh, we're not doing that here. <laughs> because it's uh that would that would be a lengthy endeavor and then i would just be making like the same thing that they already that they already made so basically we're talking about all the information i've compiled there and elsewhere and we've truncated it down a little bit uh here so saddle creek was initially called lumberjack records and it was started by Justin Obers, Connor Obers' brother, and Mike Mogus, and they just wanted to put out some some music that they liked. So uh, they ended up recording Connor's demo tape, Water, and you know he showed from a very young age that he had such a big talent and such a penchant for writing songs. And I believe he was 13 years old at the time that he recorded Water, his, his uh, demo tape. And then the second release that Lumberjack put out was the band called Polecat uh, that Ted, Ted Stevens was in. And Ted Stevens is in cursive. And um, so before that, though, let's, let's uh, rewind that back a little bit while we're on the subject of Ted Stevens. He was in a band called Gravy Train initially, and Gravy Train ended up changing their name, or there was a new iteration of the band, I guess, I don't really know, but um, but Gravy Train changed, <laughs> that's a hard thing to say, Gravy Train changed their name to Smash Mouth. And it was stylized like this all all one word and this was obviously before uh the the band smash mouth that we know you know the all stars well the years start coming and they don't stop coming um, i don't know how they came about this name but uh by the way gravy train is also 
a band um, and this is neither neither gravy train nor smash mouth are the the band you may be thinking of that was my little opener um you know headline there that uh a little little factoid for you all uh, so this was the early 90s and at the time in omaha nebraska there wasn't a lot going on as far as a scene but something was starting to happen with a band called slow down virginia you're such a jerk what you wanna do what you wanna see what you want to offer slow down virginia included uh, tim kasher on vocals and mac magnan who is also now in cursive so Slow Down Virginia was the band that everyone would go see. There was a buzz surrounding them and people, that's what people in Omaha were doing at the time is going to see Slow Down Virginia. And so as Mike Mogus and um, Justin Oberst got their label kind of going a little bit more like we want to start putting out bands and they approached Slow Down Virginia to put something out and uh, then it ended up where um, basically uh, they started calling distribution companies and wanting to you know put out records and tapes and things like that and they were running into an issue that uh, basically was that there was a distribution company already called Lumberjack Distribution so they would get on the phone and people were confused or like Do you, any you know any connection to Lumberjack Distribution who are you guys and they were like, no. So they ultimately decided, hey, we have to change our name. <laughs> and so uh, the band Polecat, uh, like I said, Ted Stevens band, uh, they had initially coined the phrase Saddle Creek. Uh, they had a song called that. And there is a Saddle Creek Road in Omaha. And so that's where the name came from. And they're a little burgeoning group of, of people. You know, the Obers, the um, AJ and Matt Mogus, Rob Nansel, uh, Ted Stevens, Matt Magnan, all these people basically, um, you know, became known as like the Creekers or the, you know, like Saddle Creekers. And they were just a known, a known group. And so therefore they ended up naturally gravitating towards Saddle Creek as a name. So the first use of Saddle Creek uh, was on January 20th, 1995. And that was at a little showcase they were doing with uh, a couple bands, Slow Down Virginia, as well as Commander Venus, which was Connor Oberst's first band after he did his solo demo tape. He formed a band with Rob Nansel, who later on uh, we'll talk about it, but he went on to basically run Saddle Creek, manage it. Uh, Matt Boeing and uh, Tim from Cursive, they convinced him to join. <laughs> um, I think there was, if you watch the documentary, you could see that either he, he says he didn't really want to be in the band or that Connor, he actually says that Connor will tell you, I didn't want to be in this band. So he, he doesn't come out and say that, but there is something there. So anyway, uh, Commander Venus plays and this is the first the first time we hear Saddle Creek or Saddle Creek Records first use of it and the flyer for that show said spend an evening with Saddle Creek. So that's where the name comes from for, for that documentary. So 1996 uh, Saddle Creek is established. Uh, they print, It's printed in the paper which if you didn't know uh, that used to be more of a thing um, when you incorporated a business, it would be like listed in the paper. It was just like part of the, you know, things that would happen when you incorporated. Um, it's not really a thing anymore. Uh, people starting LLCs left and right, you know, so, but that used to be a thing. So it was published in the paper, you know, they, they made it everything official. And by this time, Tim had started Cursive. And Cursive started to do really, really well. And so they started to, you know, they released something on Crank. Um, and then this other band, Lullaby for the Working Class, um, they also released something on Bar None. Um, and those were like the cassettes and the CDs, but Saddle Creek was doing the seven inches. Um, so that was kind of like the transformation of, of the label right there. Uh, so then I, I mentioned Lullaby for the Working Class. Now that was AJ Mogus, Mike Mogus's brother. 
Ted Stevens again from Cursive, and Mike Mogus. And so they were kind of into like really weird instruments. Uh, they talk a little bit more about this in the documentary. And I think that whole group just had a I just had an like affection for strange instruments and I don't mean like really obscure I just mean putting a cello in rock music you know that was it wasn't completely unheard of but it was very unusual and so that's was kind of like the birth of that and of course later we know you know Tim really en enjoyed enjoys doing that and he still enjoys it so uh yeah so that is kind of where we first see is in lullaby for the working class we see the weird kind of weird instruments um you know the bright eyes get started bright eyes gets going um and um the the label starts to do really well you know and uh they uh start working more with other bands azure ray uh as well as connor's side project uh desaparecidos which is like a rock band with a little punk twist to it uh the good life mayday rilo kiley sun ambulance sorry about dresden these are all great 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 uh saddle creek bands but uh one that really took kind of everything that Saddle Creek had built, um, the, the Saddle Creek sound, if you will, and just blew it open was The Faint. I By the way, if all these members that are all in the same bands are confusing to you, I do apologize. It's hard to keep straight myself on paper but these were all friends and they all wanted to help each other out and play in each other's bands if uh, somebody needed a drummer you know they they jump in and i think that's really a really cool collective to have in a, a place like omaha that you know may not have had something cool going on uh, for so long that they just decided hey you know we're gonna we're gonna put something together here we're gonna make something and there, there's something really cool about that going back to cursive one of the original band members steve peterson he left the band in 1998 to go to law school at duke university and while he was out there um you know going to duke he formed the band criteria and Criteria is one of my favorite bands on Saddle Creek. Um, Cursive is my first near and dear to my heart, but I, I do love Criteria as well. So as we move here chronologically, um, Steve Peterson comes back from, uh, from going to Duke and he's living in somebody's basement for a while. And he writes the whole entire uh, first record for the white octave and then he forms the white octave so around this time is when the faint starts to you know put together some some music and they end up releasing their album media which was a little bit all over the place but in the best way that's not in any way a disparaging comment because i love i love that record but they were trying out some styles and, and things like that and so they played a show and according to the documentary they they're really excited to have tim tim casher come and see their band and he kind of he didn't say anything like nasty or anything but he just comes and says like we, what are you guys trying to do here or something like that so they were kind of like oh no but of course you know they've they've gone on to uh become very close friends but uh the original iteration of the faint was called norman baylor and connor oberst was in this band and there is some speculation that he was kicked out of the band but i believe he says he quit so I'm not really sure <laughs> what happened there, but you can watch the documentary if you want to see them talk about it. Oh, and Connor Ober's first show, uh, he was, like like I said, about 13 years old, 14 maybe, uh, was at Kilgore's Coffee Shop in the early 90s on 33rd in California, if you're local to Omaha. Uh, that was a uh, coffee shop that, that used to be there. So uh, that's where they'd have shows and that's that was where his first show was. If you are a, a big fan of Bright Eyes, there you go. So the Faint were this enigma of a band right on Saddle Creek Records because 
the rest of Saddle Creek had a little bit of a country twang to it. They loved weird instruments within that realm. Uh, it, was, it all was in kind of contained in a uh, similar, in a similar style, in a similar vein, right? So essentially the faint came and just blew that wide open. <laughs> uh, those, the people who had called any band on Saddle Creek Records, you know, the Saddle Creek sound, so to speak, I'm sure they had their foot in their mouth when they heard the faint because they were not, they did not sound anything like any other band on Saddle Creek or any other band in the Omaha scene at that time. They were influenced by New Order and uh, 80s synth pop and things like that. So they did, they did not uh, subscribe to uh, the country twang that was going on uh, with bands like The Good Life and uh, a little bit of Sorry About Dresden. Uh, anyway, The Faint opened for Karate in 1998 with a drum machine. And at the same year, they released Media, their first record. So they shifted towards New Wave at, uh, on their second release, uh, being that, you know, they were a little bit all over the place on Media. Uh, so at that point, they really, really started to blow up and other bands were popping up in the early 2000s uh, that sounded similar. I would say like Hot Hot Heat is another contemporary band, not on Saddle Creek, but just another band that sounded similar, uh, Le Shock, I guess, maybe a little bit, but bands like that were like dance synth bands. And it, it's just so memorable for me to be sitting there watching The Faint on Jimmy Kimmel. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is wild. You know, one of the bands I like is on, is on the TV. These brave young men are the hottest dance electro masters in all of Omaha, if not the entire state of Nebraska. Their song is called Paranoia Attack from this album, Wet From Birth. Here is The Faint. So, I mean, I could see them on 120 minutes sometimes or much music. I could catch their videos. Bright Eyes, Bowl of Oranges sometimes was played um, on MTV, but it, it was it was pretty cool to see The Faint on um, on Jimmy Kimmel. That was that was pretty that was a cool moment for me personally. So, uh, after this documentary takes place uh, up until 2005, so it's from the beginning of Lumberjack Records in 1993 all the way to 2005. So there's a lot that happened. I kind of, you know, like I said, truncated this information, but there, there's a lot of details that, that went on. So Letting Off the Happiness, the first Bright Eyes record, was recorded in Connor Ober's parents' laundry room. Well, the first half of it was. Then the other half, they drove down to Athens, Georgia, and recorded it with uh, the the singer of Now It's Overhead. And so Now It's Overhead is another great band on Saddle Creek. And this is where basically Omaha started to expand out outside of Nebraska and outside of their personal friend group. I, I really think it it kind of started with uh, with no, Now It's Overhead and and the faint, the faint weren't immediately, you know, within the close knit circle and um, that they, they started to branch out. And as the label got more money, they had to make decisions based on that. Do we put out anything any friend wants to release? Because that's the point, you know, that, that was the point of their label is they wanted to be able to release anything that they wanted to put out. But they also wanted to court new artists and sign new artists. So there was kind of, you know, talks about uh, what do we release? And they, they do touch on that in the in the documentary a little bit. And so for one reason or another, the, the first Good Life record is not on uh, is not on Saddle Creek. They don't really say exactly why. I think it was just like, oh, an afterthought, like, oh, why didn't we? Why didn't we put that out? So uh, that's that's a little piece of uh, information there as well. So I did save another little <laughs> I did I did save another little tidbit of information uh, for the end of this episode here. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I am sincerely sorry if I missed an important piece of Saddle Creek history. Don't be mad at me. You can include it in the comments for others to. 
uh, read about and enjoy. I it's not intentional. It's just I'm I, there's a lot of information here for, already for me to get through, and I did a ton of research on this. Um, so that this is what I came up with. Uh, so before I tell you about the last little uh, fun fact that I found about one of the Saddle Creek bands, make sure you're subscribed to the channel for videos. We put out a video every single week. It's free and you can get notified to receive the little um, message that a new video is, is up on the channel. So we appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far. And without further ado, I'm going to talk about a diss track. <laughs> now, Saddle Creek is not a label that comes to mind when you think about diss tracks. And to be fair, no band on Saddle Creek ever put out a diss track. They did, however, respond to a diss track because there is a an artist from Lincoln, Nebraska, who... I don't know what his beef was with Connor Oberst or if he even had beef. Um, there's a lot of information on Reddit if you want to deep dive on it. But this artist that goes by the, the moniker, the show is the rainbow. Um, he decided he was going to make a diss track about Connor Oberst. And... <laughs> I I really don't I don't know why um he decided to do this but either way he made the diss track and so on the criteria record unguard their first unguard unguard uh their first record if you rewind the first track a little bit you will get the a secret track there's a bunch of records that that do that if you're not aware on CDs you could rewind a little bit on track one and there'd be like a zero track essentially so this zero track was connor oberst and some other people under the name team rig and they are rapping connor is rapping about uh this guy the show is the rainbow and it's a response to his diss track the show is the rainbow's diss track so if you are so inclined, look up Team Rig Fun Fun Destruction. Disaster's apparent, you won't last here, Darren. I'm carrying, not caring, infections are inherent. And I can't remember the name of the show is the Rainbow song. Oh, yes, I do. It's Up a Creek Without a Saddle. So there you have it, folks. Uh, some... <laughs> some pop-up video moments here on the phantom wire we appreciate you watching and hope that was a plethora of information about one of my favorite labels saddle creek records thanks for joining till next time bye, -bye.